and keep the slightest eye on social media, you're most likely familiar with the name Rick Carone. He was drafted in 1994 by the Chicago White Sox and played four years professionally. He was introduced to the hunting industry in 2003 by the outdoor industry leader, Willie Robertson, where he mastered as field editor and videographer for Buck Commander, which he continues to do today. Rick also served as VP of sales for hardcore brands and bone collector in Ottawa, Illinois, where he was responsible for complex sales initiatives, mentoring, rep development, strategic account management, and led the entire sales force in, in a significantly profitable direction. As a father of two daughters, Carson, 17, and Tyler, 14, Rick was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer in May of 2013. Rick was given a 15% chance of living past one year and less than a 5% chance of surviving past year five. However, Rick refuses to let statistics rule his life, and his fight against this disease has become so powerfully inspirational that the entire outdoor industry has come to his prayerful rescue. Rick is a man of faith and fights his battles the same way he has modeled his life, with God, family, and friends. He travels throughout the country and speaks of this model to overcome just about anything thrown our way. He has spent, spent, uh, spoken to several NCAA Division I athletic programs, high school athletic programs, national charities, business, businesses, and most recently at the U New York City Marathon as part of Project Purple this past November 2nd, 2014. Rick is a hunter, athlete on Sheep Shape TV, very proud to say that Wild Sheep Foundation will be a major sponsor of that program, airing June 2015 on the Sportsman's Channel. And he was recently kicked out of the Less Than One Club, taking an absolutely stunning fan and ram with Midnight Sun outfitting and Jesse Young as his guide. And he was recognized this morning with an outstanding uh, achievement as well as uh, a, a RAM award for this great RAM, which is the new number one muzzle-loading fan and sheep. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a very hearty welcome to Mr. Rick Carone. Wow, hope I can live up to that. Uh, that was pretty impressive right there, Gray. Thank you very much. First of all, I want to thank Gray and the entire Wild Sheep Foundation um, for this platform, not only to share my story, but also the story of what we like to call ourselves the Band of Four. Uh, Chad Hall, Patrick Scroggin, Kelsey Burford. You know, our Band of Four um, was chosen by Chad and his good friends at Rusted Rooster Productions, uh, one of his good childhood friends, Mr. Jason Brown. Uh, and Jason and Rusted Rooster, thank you for sticking behind us. Um, it's, it's, it's one of those things that you don't realize until you are going through some struggle in life, people that truly stand behind you for the right reasons and people truly are good and humanity is good. I was the last hunter chosen um, for Sheep Shape by Mr. Chad Hall in, um, I believe it was late May. And Chad and I had a relationship um, that's absolutely crazy to even talk about right now, but um, it started out where he had heard and seen some, uh, some internet um, um, speaking engagements that I had and also some of the outdoor industry people had put together a video rooting for me and going through my battle. And Chad reached out to me and asked me if I would like to be a part of what they're doing by helping them find that fourth hunter, not having me in mind originally. And I said, I said, brother, I'd be glad to. I said, it's hugely inspirational what you're doing, and I'd love to be a part of that. Well, he would send me inspirational things because, hey, I went through cancer myself. And um, I know you can do it if I can do it. And here's just every day he would send me inspirational um, letters, um, inspirational moments that he went through just to get through my chemotherapy treatments. And 
Chad, I love you like a brother. Thank you for doing that because that got me to the next level. Um, the next call that I received from him, thank you. The next call I received from him was, hey, I've been thinking long and hard and talking to the rest of the people on the team, and we'd like you to be number four. And I was, I think I was excited as Dakota was, but went in the uh, less than one club today. <laughs> I mean, I screamed up and down, I think, like a little girl, and, and I was excited, and then reality set in. I was, uh, I was in the middle of my chemotherapy treatments, and I wasn't sure if, if physically I could do it, mentally I could do it, and if the doctors would release me to do it. So I talked to my doctors, and they said, hey, if you think that you can do this, then we're going to stand behind you 100%. Well, as soon as I received that news, it was a green light go for Chad and, and the rest of the team, and, and we got started to, um, to put together what you guys just saw today. Um, a lot of those things wouldn't be possible, and I really would be remiss if I didn't thank the sponsors, such as the Wild Sheep Foundation. Um, the Wild Sheep Foundation is more than Gray and his staff. It's everyone in this room and everyone that gets one of those magazines every month, so thank you all for being a part of what we're doing, because it means a lot to us. Um, it means a lot to us in going through what we're going through, not only physically, but uh, mentally for our families and friends. And we hope to along the way, as you could tell, it's not just a hunting show. And I think you could see that by the two and a half minutes. It's a passion project. And it's something that we hope that we can inspire people um, along the way to overcome pretty much anything that they want to overcome, whether it be a hunt they don't think they can go on, like myself, or whether it be an individual battle that they may be fighting. I mean, we have four powerful platforms, um, Kelsey going through her abuse and bullying, that she's gonna reach so many people through the platform. Patrick Scroggin being a wounded warrior, one of my heroes, one of our heroes that has fought for our country. And um, Chad Hall, who has proven to me and everyone else that you can beat cancer, and you can do it in a noble way and in a fighting way, so, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I get teared up every time I saw that thing, that, um, that sizzle reel. And, and the episodes are going to be just, just unbelievable because I know what we did as a group on our hunt um, throughout our, each of our four hunts. And uh, that's just the tip of the iceberg. It really is. So I hope you guys will tune in and follow along in our journey with us. And... Um, I'm sure the Wild Sheep Foundation and, and the rest of our publications and I will uh, let you guys know when that's going to be coming out in quarter three next year. Um, I really want to uh, explain a little bit about my hunts because, I, you know, it's something that was probably one of the most spiritual journeys I've ever been on, but it also still haunts me to this day. For those of you that are bow hunters out there, you're going to understand this. For those of you that have gone with a guide, you're going to understand this. You're going to feel my pain. I was talking to Mr. Foss over there, and he felt my pain. I know he did. We, um, Jesse and I were on, a, were on a journey and went up the mountain and just spotted an absolute slammer. And we hiked up four and a half hours. And I didn't know if I could take another step. And she said, you all right, buddy? And I'm like, yeah. She goes, well, let's take a break here, and I'll glass around the rock. And we had a big big boulder in front of us. And I went down to one knee, took some water. Cameraman did the same thing. Took some water, and Jessie is, puts her glasses up. And I see her do this and grab a range finder. And I'm like looking at her with big eyes. And she turns and she says, eight yards. <laughs> and I'm like, are you kidding me? Immediately, my blood's pumping. I went up with, the, I had my bow, had my release that I kept on, knocked an arrow. And she told me specifically, she said, I'll be in your left pocket. Your cameraman's going to be in your right. We're going to go around to the right. Chip shot. Let's do it. Gave her a fist pump. She now goes to take off her pack. What did I do? I didn't listen to her. I went and peeked over to the left side. Oh, this isn't working. I peeked to the left side. 
And he stood right at me and went, huh? And I peeked back like a little kid saying, it didn't see me, it didn't see me, it didn't see me. <laughs> sure enough, we went and planned to go to our right side now. And he's at about 100 yards and darting away. Drop the bow, drop the bow, grab the gun. I'm going, ah. Put a primer in, because I did. I brought a bow and a muzzle letter that I had both, both weapons. So I primed my muzzle loader, got down into prone position. She's mewing at it, stops it, gives me a range, 224 yards, and I shoot. And got zero reaction. My heart sunk. She goes, you missed. And we watched this ram walk and go over the top. I immediately went to prayer. And I thought, you know, everything was moving so fast, and I thought, there's no way I missed that ram. I was steady. I was in prone position, shooting one of the most amazing weapons I've ever shot in my life, a gunworks muzzleloader, that I'd shot day after day prior to my trip there up to 600 yards. So a 224 shot, yard shot with that gun was, I mean, a chip shot. So my heart rate is up, I reload, and we are running up this hill to catch, see where that ram went. And we crest that hill, and he's there, done. I did it. <laughs> There's a little more to the story, but that's just, you're going to have to tune in to figure out the rest, I guess. But that's the, that's the basis of that story. And, you know, in that, in that moment of prayer and in that moment, I kind of look back on it now and reflect and I say, you know, those few seconds of me not putting my trust in someone that I needed to put my trust in, I needed to put my faith in. But how many times have we done that in our lives before? We know what we're supposed to do. We know who we're supposed to put our trust in. We know who we're supposed to, put, supposed to put our faith in, yet we have that doubt. We just have to see it and believe it. Well, that's not having faith, is it? So being a man of faith, you know, I, I, I thought that I not only let myself down, but I let Jesse down at that point in time. And that hike and sprint up the mountain really felt like it was a very, very long, a long ways. But, uh, you know, things do happen for a reason, um, whether that be that our um, incredible gun sponsor got to share in the glory with, with us, um, whether it be that uh, I was able to renew my faith and make a not only you know, good shot and have, a, have an incredible person there with me and my guide, but to make a lifelong friend and not only her, but her whole family because of that story and how it went, because we still talk about it today. Um, you heard me say a quote during my, uh, during my sheep shape journey, and I said, nothing can, you, can prepare you for the Yukon except for the Yukon. And then the next, the next quote was, is that I could have used a little bit more training, but under the circumstances, it's go time. Well, sometimes it feels good to be winded, you know, having trouble breathing, having your chest hurt during a workout or hunting or doing what you're doing, as you guys know that have worked hard for something, because it lets you know you're alive. It lets you know you're living. I know you guys have probably heard that quote before. Um, it's one of those things that, you know, when you do get a little pain, it kind of lets you know that you're in, in things for the right reasons. I believe that my journey um, is one that I, I like to call mapping. And um, I was born of God, and I know I'm going to die of God. I'm a very big, very big believer in um, spirituality. I don't care what religion you are. Be a spiritual person. We spend so much time as hunters on mountains, in the woods, um, not only during hunting season, but in the off seasons. And I don't know about you guys, but that's probably my number one time to, to reflect and pray and be, be one with my God and understand where I am and where I need to be. And, you know, if it wasn't for decisions that I made in my life and knowing who I am, I never would have been chosen to go on this, this journey 
See, God had it mapped out for me to be here right here in front of you today sharing my story. He had it mapped out having your support because I know that, I don't know how many people are here today, but even if one of you are affected by what I'm talking about today, that's one more prayer that I'm going to get. And the outdoor industry in itself has been a huge platform for me spiritually and having those people pray for me. And I know that I pray for, for myself, my family members, my teammates, and um, anyone that's ever contacted me. It's one of those things where I've based myself with God, family, and friends because without God at your foundation, nothing can be built on top of that. Without going to your family next and having your family be a part of who you are, there's nothing that can be on top of that. And then you have your friends to kind of be the tip of the iceberg. The outdoor industry has become my family. My friends have become my family, and I've been able to reach a lot of them and bring them closer to their spirituality and help them, and I hope I'm able to help some of you guys too. Um, my diagnosis was one where I actually lost my mother to the same disease after being diagnosed at the age of 49 years old and only living two months past her diagnosis. Um, doctors said that it's not genetic in what I have, yet you kind of question it, you know, what, what they do know and what they don't know. And it's, it's one of those things that uh, if you have any, any type of cancer in your, in your family, um, we've all been touched by it. We've all know someone with it and or had it in our, in our families. Um, you know, there's only one way to go. It's not question, why do I have it? Like I did my guide. You have to have faith. You have to have faith that there's a bigger reason, there's a bigger purpose and like I said before, I know where I'm going when I die, and it's going to be the ultimate sheep hunt in the sky. And uh, I can't wait to get there. There's a quote by the late Stuart Scott, and I know you guys have all heard of him. He's one of our great uh, sportscasters for ESPN. He uh, deemed the quotes just as cool as the other side of the pillow and, and been just a, a huge... Um, resource for myself and so many other cancer patients. He fought for a noble battle for many, many years. And he had this quote that I want to, um, to share with you. When you, and here it is, when you die from cancer or any other disease, it does not mean that you lose to that disease. You beat it by how you live, why you live, and in the manner in which you live. It's pretty powerful if you really truly think about it and break it down. I've taken that and used that in my everyday life because I want to live the right way. I want to live the right way where my daughters can look up to me. I want to live the right way where people can look up to me. I want to live the right way where I can inspire people. But more importantly, we all look to be inspired. And that's the, that's the big thing that I look to do. I look to be inspired every day. You know, it's a win-win on, on living or dying. Um, I know I'm either going to be a miracle and survive and, and beat this another year. Or I'm not going to be. And uh, I'll know where I'm going. You know, the God family and friends that has helped me out so much is something that I know can, can help you. I hope that it can inspire you, and I hope that you can understand that through the outdoor industry, through the Wild Cheap Foundation, through the people that are around you today, if you're to just ask them, you know, what gets you going in the morning or what helps you out every day, you know, some people may have a different story than mine, but deep down, deep rooted, I know that that spirituality is there. You look at different things and different um, perspectives and you look at different things in life and you look at different people and they all have a story. I had to deliver a eulogy of one of my best friends last March that took his own life and his wife told me to please keep things positive and keep things a celebration. And I said, Heather, you know what? We want to we, we keep things as, as positive and a celebration throughout everyone's life. But where did we fail that you're having to, you know, to tell me this right now? 
And Chris was a guy that was so close to me that I told her, I said, you know what? It's going to be my mission from every day, from here on out, to tell people that I care about them and I love them. And I urge you guys to do the same thing. The Wild Cheap Foundation. You guys, everyone here, you've done more for me and this band of four right here in front of our table over the past eight months than you will ever know. And I hope that you will continue to stand by us and stand by the rest of your family and friends that are going through any type of struggle. Let them know you love them. Let them know you care about them. And let them know that you're going to be there for them no matter what happens. Because remember, in the end, we all have our God, we all have our family, and we all have our friends. And it feels good to be winded, and sometimes it feels good to be breathing. And when you can't fight yourself, I'm going to rely on you guys to fight with me. Thank you.